This was a behind closed doors, uh, very specific media only demonstration. One of the guys at Easy Allies also saw it. Um, the everyone that I saw invited was very specifically like press folks. Like everyone trot was like, you know, had put n notes and paper and they were all taking notes. A lot of the stuff they were saying I already knew because I was so like versed up on it, but um, I think they only had a couple of these every single day and it was, uh, it was presented by Kitase, who is, I think, one of the lead producers on Final Fantasy VII Remake, and he directed, uh, the original Final Fantasy VII. Uh, so Kitase-san was there, there was a translator, and it was in a small room with, like, ten people, and there was also, uh, I think it was Wantanabe-san, I think he was a designer on FF7 Remake. He sort of guided us through the the gameplay demonstration itself. I want to make sure I get these guys' names right. It was a 45-minute demonstration. And this was actually in the room where all the accolades are, because Final Fantasy VII is getting a ridiculous amount of accolades at E3. Uh, I have never seen a wall so... Like, I thought Dragon Ball Fighters was crazy. I think I saw more accolade stuff around Final Fantasy VII Remake in the end than I did Cyberpunk. Which is nutty. Uh, it was a long demo, and they answered a lot of questions, and a lot of- a lot of this information has been put out there because on the first day, it was answered, like, they- they actually showed the entire voice cast list, and they had some answers about, like, the voices, uh, specifically the fact that they hired a new cast just for FF7 Remake, and they said that a lot of the existing roles that people have been playing for, you know, or Aerith or Tifa or Cloud or Barrett, people that have been playing those roles over the past like 15, 16 years, are going to continue playing those roles in things that are not FF7 Remake. So if it's like Cydia, if it's like another project where Cloud is like a guest appearance or something like that, apparently they said they're going to continue using the original voice actors. But for the sake of FF7 Remake, they actually wanted to make it completely original. They wanted it to be a voice cast that you wouldn't exactly be familiar with. Um, and I think they... There's some... There's some very specific decisions behind that. And I think it's down completely to characters. And completely to the fact that... They want Cloud to be depicted a certain way. They want Tifa to be depicted a certain way. They want Barrett to be depicted a certain way. Um, and we were saying how... A bit of the way, like, Barrett is interpreted in the original FF7 remake trailers, which is actually, I think it's Bo Billingsley, the guy who does um, Jet in, you know, Cowboy Bebop, an amazing Barrett, and he's been Barrett in a lot of stuff. Uh, he ended up not being Barrett in the final version of, I believe, recorded voice lines for FF7R. But someone else got the job. I'm not too sure who the new guy is. I'd have to go back and check. But the new Barrett is seemingly a lot more like the original FF7 Barrett that we remember. Like, this this Barrett acts a lot more like the Barrett that you kind of remember seeing Barrett act. The cursing, like, bombastic Barrett. We were talking about this last night, and it... And after... After seeing a lot of Barrett talk today, I've seen all the characters talk to each other a lot. Um, they're going in that direction more. So, the English Barrett is a bit different than the Japanese Barrett in terms of translation and how that character came out. So they they want to keep honest to each region. And I think Barrett's going to sound a lot different in the Japanese version than what he does now. But he curses a lot, he has a lot to say, and the character is very preachy in general because he he's super passionate about trying to save the planet, just like he is in FF7. It's just that he's over the top and he's willing to do anything because obviously the character has had everything taken from him, including his family, um, in FF7. That's why he's going after Shinra. So it's, uh, that was expensive, yeah. They, they pretty much voice over the whole game and then did it all over again. Like at some point it just, I guess they thought it wasn't working and they hired completely new voice actors and yeah. I will say, Crods, no. Um, what I saw, I can tell you with complete uh, confidence, um, what I saw was the entire bombing run. I saw it from the point which the train pulls into the station. Uh, Jesse and Biggs 
are jumping out and fighting some guards and detaining them. Uh, Barrett jumps out and says, get down here, rookie. And the music crescendos and Cloud jumps off and poisons the sword. And then it goes from there. I've seen all of it. Um, and not many people have seen it. And I don't think many people have actually detailed. Some people have talked about it, but not many people have actually detailed it. I also got a second chance to play the uh, the gameplay demo, which is pretty much what happens. They take you through a certain point and describe several mechanics and gameplay things and story and music and all this stuff. And it lasts a good, like, 30 minutes. And then they stop and they say, from this point forward, this is where our gameplay demo outside concludes. Or, I'm sorry, continues. So if you want to go play it, you can. So I got, I got the unique opportunity to play it again and uh, find out some things that I really wanted to find out about, like, gameplay stuff. So that was, uh, it was refreshing because I got to mess around a bit more with combat, uh, with the demo that they had. However, the playable demo that they have on the floor is much more restrictive in terms of what the characters are capable of. Like, they, I think they specifically toned, took away some mechanics so that, hmm, so that they could, they could get, uh, they could get the game a bit more presentable for, like, just having fun. But there's a lot more. There's a, uh, there's a lot more the characters can do in this game. Uh, that they're not really talking much about. So, um, man. Uh, long story short, um, I guess I'll, I guess I'll talk about what happened leading up to this. Uh, so. Not allowed to capture footage, no. Um, not allowed to capture footage. Uh, they talked a lot about the music, they talked about a lot of the development, how it's a big commitment, and they don't want to fuck this up. Uh, they, it was super important to them, and they had uh, a specific thing that I was curious about because it hadn't been said, but I was feeling it. I was, whenever you were, when I was playing FF7 Remake, I felt it. And you feel that there's a, sp there's a reason this game's getting high accolades. There is a very specific consideration made for Final Fantasy VII fans almost everywhere throughout the game. Um, especially if you remember the old game, and if you are, like, looking forward to something, there's a, there's a lot of consideration put into the mechanics, the visuals, the music, just to, just to get you. Like, just to grab a heartstring and pull every fucking corner you turn. Uh, and that's for a good reason. Um, like I was saying earlier, the Resident Evil 2 developers were talking about their development of RE2, and the reason RE2 came out so good was that they didn't just put it in the hands of, uh, uh, sort of executive slash, uh, veteran Capcom employees. They brought in a bunch of Capcom employees for RE2 that were younger, that got jobs at Capcom because they grew up playing Resident Evil 2. They grew up playing those games. That's why they're working at Capcom. And that was a huge reason why RE2 is as good as it is. It's a reimagining. It's not a re it's not a remake. It's it's Resident Evil 2 done a completely different way. And as a result, some people might like the original more. But in my opinion, a Resident Evil 2 remake is way, way better than the original. What I'm getting at is the Final Fantasy VII team uh, was saying that, yeah, we wanted to bring in a lot of people that were fans of FF7 that are working at Square Enix. So most of the development staff and a lot of the hard development staff between artists and musicians and sound engineers and gameplay engineers and a lot of that stuff is being masterminded by quite literally the guys that made FF7 original, but it's also being designed by people that grew up with this shit just like we did. So that's important. And I had a funny feeling about that. <laughs> Sakaguchi? Not so much. <laughs> I don't think he's uh, I don't think he's in the development at all. But it's a very good move, and it and it it confirms a lot of stuff of why it kind of seems to have that love and attention put into it because it's being made by Final Fantasy VII fans. So that's that's a pretty good call. Okay, I'm already a little bit teary-eyed talking about it because I'll explain to you in a second. This is going to be hard for me not to choke up. I'm wearing my Final Fantasy VII jacket. Um, the one day I chose to go to E3, um, I chose to wear this chat room. This was given to the original uh, translation staff at Squaresoft when they made FF7 the original. Um, 
And I had a, I had an appointment today to play the game, and I'm like, this is the only day I'll ever get to wear this. I decided to wear that, and a lot of people were commenting on the jacket saying, like, where did you get it? Where did it come from? Um, it was very cool. Uh, and, uh, I got it from eBay. <laughs> Rare as fuck jacket, right? Like, extremely... Brings back a lot of memories. Those were also handed to the Square Enix, or sorry, Squaresoft development staff in Japan. Anyway, uh, we walk in, and uh, it's a little demonstration room with a big ass TV, and there's the uh, the lead, the original director of Final Fantasy VII, and the producer of this one, as well as uh, Watanabe san, who I'm pretty sure is a, is a designer on the game because he was going to run through the whole demo. And I noticed that one of the guys was looking at me a lot and was like, was like, paying attention. I thought it was just the jacket. He was paying attention to the jacket, but uh, he was actually talking to Kitase in uh, Japanese. He was saying something, and then they laughed, and, and then they started getting into the demonstration. So, as these guys were, were, were demonstrating the game that they had been making for the past, like, five-something years, uh, I noticed they were like, looking at me every single time it was happening. Anyway, long story short, I'll describe what happens during the demo, um, but I asked one of the Squaresoft, uh, Square Enix employees, who, uh, who also came up to me, one of the guys that was, like, translating, um, and was saying how he's a big fan of the videos and he's been following our, like, reactions and all this stuff to FF7 for a long time. Uh, and I asked him if it's possible to get a picture with, uh, Kitase san and Montana Bay san, uh, before we go, because all the other media folks were just like, thank you, and they left. Um, and Kitase was just like standing there. So I ask him, and they're like, like, absolutely, no problem. And then I take a picture with both of them, and I put it on Twitter, and I'm like, fucking crazy. I'm, I'm standing with and taking, hanging out with the literal guy who directed FF7 and parts of the new development staff. And then Watanabe san is that before he spoke in pretty good like English and he was like before you go can I get a picture with you I would like to show the development staff and I'm like what so he takes a picture of all three of us together and he is describing the fact that uh, a lot of the development team oh shit when FF7 first came out back in 2015 and their development was like crazy and they were working really hard on the game they was just they were describing uh, <sighs> Hold on, let's do this. He was saying that when things were tough for the team and they were trying to figure things out and what was like the right choice, uh, he was saying they always showed the team the video from the first reaction. The one where we first saw FF7 that I made like a story out of it. I don't want to believe it. Look at it already! Are coming back. He was saying that whenever the team was feeling down, and he wanted to motivate everybody, they would watch that video. And it did said he it gave them energy to try to go forward and make the right choices. Holy shit, dude! Even when I was there, this didn't hit me that hard. Just just thinking about it in uh, in retrospect is fucking tough. <laughs> Give me a second, chat room. Oh god. Okay, we're good. Uh, in times of, like, when things are feeling bad, he would like to show the whole team, uh, that video, because that's what they're going for. They were trying to hit that, and, uh, it was the same thing when other things would come out. They would sort of, like, watch reaction videos, and they, they specifically said that what was happening in my videos is, like, the, the emotions that they want to try to get out of people. So, when things were looking down, they used that to sort of give them energy, he said. I was... Absolutely blown away because it looks like Katase was one of the ones that was one of them and uh, Yeah, uh, I just had to tell them Everything they should have seen everything that we have they've shown so far is going So beyond the expectations of what a Final Fantasy 7 fan can have of what someone can like 
This is my favorite fucking video game of all time. And with even very high expectations, um, they've managed to exceed the shit out of it. So I had to let them know that what they're doing is not going unnoticed, and there's a reason why everyone's talking about it. There's a reason why all these, like, wonderful awards that are on the wall for this game are there. And it's because they truly give a shit, and they're trying to make... They're really trying to make people happy. Ah! Damn it, Chad! Okay.